Normally you see me doing gardening and cooking and food preservation with my homesteading channel here in my backyard homestead. But there's also a few things that we could talk about with um, backup power and transportation. And today I wanna to share with you the e-bike that I ordered. Now I'm an environmental engineer. Yes, I know that there are problems with electric vehicles as well as combustion vehicles. There's, it's a no-win situation. You're either using resources or you're adding contamination. Um, with the way gas prices are now though, I thought that maybe I could at least get some life out of an e-bike battery, smaller battery, and go electric and use my new Pecron solar generator to recharge it. And uh, that battery for the bike probably last five years, but it came today. So I wanted to show you the unboxing and I'm going to put it together too. So here it is. It's my mock wheel basalt step through bike. manual, tools, pump, pedals, headlamp, hardware, some more hardware, zip ties, wrenches, charger, charger cord, and the user manual for the battery charger.
It's 93 degrees to get it today. I'm sweating. The directions could be better, but I had to flip the forks 180. The brake needs to be back towards the rest of the body of the bike. Now I'm ready to put the fender and headlight on. If I can figure out the directions. putting the front wheel on and just so you know make sure you pull out this little it's a protector that came in the in the brake caliper in there and then that'll allow you to put the brake rotor in and I've got the washers and nuts to tighten this up on both sides with a bike pump. This came with it. I might go get my digital one though. Just to be more exact, to be able to get 20 PSI. 20 PSI. Alright. Flashlight. Come on. 
that's cool. Okay. Flashlight. What do we go? Where's the go button? There we go. it's up to 10. So just to do a close up here, the first thing I had to do was loosen these two screws to be able to rotate the fork properly so that the brake is facing towards the main body of the bike. Their picture didn't show that very well. And then you loosen this screw to be able to flip this, the bar post 180 degrees forward. And then you attach the bars using attach the bars using this screw and that screw, and then you attach loosely, I've got it attached loosely so it wouldn't hit the ground, the computer, and then I figure I'll adjust all that once I get it turned over. And then I had to put the fender on there and the headlight, put the one screw through that whole assembly and the nut on the back, tighten it, and then up here on the fender supports, I screw down these two real tight on either side, then removed that protective rubber insert where the brake caliper is, put the wheel on, tightened up the two wheel nuts, and now I'm filling the tire to 20 PSI. We're at 15 right now, 15 and a half. This little handheld bike pump, or pump for whatever, is awesome. I'll include the links for this in the description box below. All right, I have adjusted. I don't need to adjust the height of the handlebars anymore because this bike is fairly tall. I'm 5'4", and I'm going to leave it all the way, post all the way down. I did angle it up a little bit this way so that I can see the screen and reach the pedals really well. I adjusted the screen while I was sitting on the seat to make sure it's in view good. And me being short, I don't need to adjust the seat to be any taller, so that is going to stay all the way down. Now I need to put the pedals on. Okay, the pedals are labeled left and right, so obviously this is the right one. And it even has a label on here that says right pedal, tighten this way. Left pedal, tighten the other way. I'm just gonna get them started. Okay. can do right now because they are shipping the battery separately. I'm sure that's a hazard rule. So that is the assembly of the bike so far. Mm, actually it's not. They didn't say anything about tightening this rack down so I need to tighten the rear rack down. If they said it I missed it. So we'll do that. Okay I just had to remove to, to attach the back rack. It was partially attached, just not all the way for shipping. I had to remove that screw there and then move the rack into place and align all the holes and put the screw and washer back in and tighten it down. I need to plug in the headlight and that little plug is keyed, so let me make sure I get it keyed the right way. I need to let go so I can use both hands, but you can see how that plug is keyed. So I need to uh, use two hands to get that put in. So it wasn't that difficult, just it's really hot out and it was a little bit of grunting, but it's basically all put together. 
and it looks really sharp. I'm excited to be able to use it, but I need to wait for the battery, and I think that's going to be a couple of days before it gets here, unfortunately. I think everything's tightened, adjusted, ready for the battery so that I can turn it on. What I have left, so I had to use my own pliers to hold a nut or two still while I tightened. I used my own air pump, but I didn't need to because it came with an air pump, a manual one. What I have left is the battery charger and the Allen wrench tool set is nice. I'll keep that with the bike. This is the key set for the locking battery. I have a whole lot of extra screws that I'm not really sure what I need those for. I only had to get one out for the headlight, I believe it was. There's some extra zip ties in here. I assume that's for cable management. I don't really see right now where I'm going to need that, but those may come in handy once I figure out, start writing it, if I have any cables that aren't in position where I want them. And this little bag, um, I'm not a huge bike enthusiast anymore, but I'm going to be, but I think these look like little extra brake pads probably. That looks like some sort of a composite material, so, or maybe they're weights. I don't know what those are, but they were included with no instructions, but definitely be, gonna be keeping those. So until the battery comes, all ready to go. The battery goes right in here underneath and it's keyed. It's keyed right here to lock in. And then here's the charging port. You can charge it while the battery's in or you can remove the battery. I'm guessing that some of those screws are for whatever's supposed to mount to there, but I don't know what it might be. And then the other thing besides the battery that hasn't gotten here yet is an inverter that you're able to solar charge, which I will do with my Pecron solar generator, or you can charge that via wall charger, but it mounts right in here, along here, and then you can charge the bike on the go with that inverter. And it's specially made so that you don't burn up the battery. So I'm excited to receive that too. But I think that straps on, so you don't need any screws for that. So who knows what the extra screws are for? We'll find out. It always is worrisome when you get too many extra parts, but um, it looks pretty cool. The handlebars have paddles. This is the half throttle got brake levers that are nice. This is the shifter and the release to go down in shifting. And there's a protective cover on here, but that'll show you what gear you're in. And then this side is for the headlight. There's a horn built into the headlight, I think. That must be down here. And then here's the headlight button. This is the on button. And then you have the assist levels. There are seven gears over here to use, and then there are five assist levels. You'll see all of that information on this computer screen. It's a color screen, shows you your battery power, your distance traveled, I, I forget what else, but um, I'm excited to use this thing, and it should be nice and comfortable to ride. Like I said, I'm 5'4", and I am able to touch the ground kind of on my tippy toes, so even though it's a step through, it's still a pretty tall bike. The other thing I want to show you is the bike rack that I got. Uh, two weekends ago, my son and my dad put on a hitch on my Subaru Crosstrek because I didn't have a hitch that came with it, with my Crosstrek. So they did that, and then I also got this e-bike rack and the thing is you can't just get any old e-bike rack it has to be one that'll hold these heavy fat tire bikes this one will hold two 80 pound e-bikes i will include links in the description for the hitch that i put on and for the e-bike rack it also comes with an adapter for regular wheel bikes that you can put on here so i could carry an e-bike and a regular bike, or two e-bikes, two regular bikes. Comes with the cable lock. The It locks on the hitch as well. There's a key for that. And then separately, I had to get this because of the step through. Um, the way the rack works, it clamps down on a crossbar. 
it would clamp down on a crossbar. Well, there isn't a crossbar on a step through, so you have to get this adapter that stretches from the steering column to the seat post. You stretch that across, and then that gives the rack something to clamp down on. So I had to get two of these separately, and I'll include links for those in the description box as well. But I am super happy with the rack, the hitch, the bike. It's going to be great once I get the battery to be able to ride the thing. And then the other thing I wanted to show you for what I'm going to charge the bike with is my uh, solar my solar generator, and I'll include a better review of this. I won't do an extensive review. There are plenty of those on there, but I will show you some of this, the features of this in another video. But I, this, uh, we took camping a couple weeks ago and it really performed well. I've got four panels, the solar generator, and this is the Pecron 3000W, and all the cables, the chargers, it came with a cover, to go over it, it came with a trolley, which I haven't even had a chance to put together yet, but it's, it is heavy, so that will help wheel it around, but this thing is great. It really performed well when we were camping, and this is what I intend to charge the bike with, so I'll include links for that in the description box below, too. It's definitely a gorgeous bike, very sturdy. Fat tire. I'll include some of the specifications in the description box. Not too bad to put together. A few incomplete instructions, a few missing, but it's pretty intuitive to put together. So there we go.